use algebra to solve, make sure you are paying attention to the words in a question. This is not a proof. If you try to prove a solved question, you will fail miserably. Because in a solved question, it only works for like one or two values. In a proof question, it's supposed to work for everything. So this question is saying solve, not prove. Now, the reason this is in chapter 7 is because on the left-hand side, we have a sine of x. On the right-hand side, we have a cosecant x. And so this is hard to solve because we have two different trig functions. It's like when you try to solve an equation with an x and a y, it's hard to solve because you have one equation with two things you don't know. Well, it's sort of the same thing with trig functions. Right now, we have one equation with two trig functions. But maybe there's a way with our identities that we could write this with just one trig function. What could I change? I could change the cosecant x to 1 over sine. Again, careful with that 2 out in front. You might be tempted to put that 2 in the denominator. But that 2 out in front is, in fact, a fraction itself, 2 over 1. And so that 2 will get multiplied by the numerator. And at this point, they expect you to be proficient and an expert in solving rational equations from grade 11. Do you remember how you solved something like this? You want to isolate x, how are you going to do that? You want to solve for x, one x is on the bottom. What did we do? Don't remember? Okay, that's, that's a grade 11 topic that comes up again just in the middle of a question. And you're supposed to be able to completely know how to work with that. Now, it's with sine is on the bottom, not an x on the bottom. So a couple of things you could have done in grade 11. One of them was, I don't like that x on the bottom. What would I do if I don't like something on the bottom of an equation? Multiply. So if I multiplied this whole side by x, can you see that I need to multiply this by x? and this by x, and then I multiply this side by x. If I multiply both sides by x, what's going to happen? I'm going to get 2x squared equals 3x, and here the x's would cancel out. Okay? That gets rid of the variable in your denominator. So what am I going to multiply in my question? If I have a sine x on the bottom. I'm going to multiply everything by sine x. Is everybody mathematically OK with the fact that it looks like on the left side I only multiplied once, and on the right side I multiplied twice? Why does that work? It's like I multiplied a sine x here and a sine x here, but here I only multiply sine x once. Why does that happen? On the right, they're separated by an addition sign. So why does that allow me to multiply both of them? OK. Yeah, they're two separate terms. Technically, technically, what you never do as students, or also rarely as teachers in the explanation of this, I'm just going to erase this for now. Can you see technically what you're doing is you're multiplying this whole side by sine x. And you're multiplying this whole side by sine x. But when I have a plus sign, this gets distributed to both of those terms. But what do most teachers just do? They just write sine x over each term. But I don't know if we're thinking about what actually happened there to help us remember. Okay. On this side, you just have one term. So you're not multiplying the 2 by sine and the sine by sine, just once. So what do we get? We're going to get 2 sine squared x equals 3 sine x. 
Here the sine x's cancel out, plus 2. So we have to know how to solve rational equations. Now what kind of equation do we have? Quadratic. So we have to know how to solve quadratic equations. How do we solve a quadratic equation? We make one side equal to 0. And so I'll subtract 3 sine x and subtract 2 on both sides. Make sure I don't forget the equals 0. Does this factor nicely? If it did, it would have to be 2 sine x and sine x. And 2 is either 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. And it makes a difference in this question if I write 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. Can you see that if I put the 2 on the outside and the 1 on the inside, that overall my outside is 4, my inside is 1? Can I ever get negative 3 with 4 and 1? Yes, I would need to make my outside the negative 4, my inside a positive 1. Every time you factor, you should quickly multiply it out afterwards just to double check. Does it give me 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x minus 2? So do that mental math in your head. If you say yes, then continue. So now we can split it here, and either sine x is equal to negative a half or sine x is equal to 2. What family do you get a half for sine? 30 degrees or pi over 6. Are we working in degrees or radians in this question? Radians. So we have to go pi over 6 family. It's negative in quadrants 3 and quadrants 4. When is sine x equal to 2? Never. You do need to indicate that that is not possible. Can't just leave it blank. If you leave it blank, they actually, I think it's only a half mark. Don't think it's a full mark deduction. Because you need to indicate that you know that there's no solution. It's not enough just to circle this side and leave this side blank. Because then the, the reasoning behind it is some students leave it blank because they don't know, and some students leave it blank because they know there's no answer. How do we tell? between the students that are smart but leave it blank and those that are just blank, but whatever. So need some sort of indication. So they say you have to show not possible. Okay? We already reread the question to check our domain, so these are our final answers. So we have a question. We look back at the beginning. It started off with a solve that had a sine x and a cos cosecant x. You needed to use an identity to get the functions the same, which created an equation that was a rational equation that you solved in grade 11. So you had to go back to your grade 11 skills and say, this is how I solve a rational equation. After multiplying by sine, which was the strategy to solve for a rational equation, you got a quadratic equation. So you had to go back to grade 11 and say, these are my skills for solving quadratic equations. And then it came back to the unit circle after you'd factored it. So all of our units start to come together. All right, part B. Sine x is equal to cos x. Method one, when does that happen on your pi plate? When they're both root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2? Okay, so then x is equal to? No, x is the angle, pi over 4, good. And then also why 5 pi over 4? That's where they're both negative. So we could use just our pi plate and say, I know when they're both the same at pi over 4 and at 5 pi over 4. 
Method two. Take your equation and figure out a way that you could write this with just one trig function. Currently, there's a sine and there's a cos. But if I divide both sides by cos x, can you see this side will be 1? And the other side will be 10. When is tan equal to 1? In the 45 degree or pi over 4 family. In quadrant 1, it's positive. It's also positive in quadrant 3. So then it's using the identity that you know that tan is equal to sine over cos. Question for practice is number 10, but we're going to go and do one more question.